Hey guys, Frosty Knives here, back with another EU book review, and today we're going to be taking a look at Karen Travers's Star Wars, The Clone Wars, No Prisoners. And this book was published in 2009, and it clocks in at a modest 257 pages. Um, it's almost short enough to be a novella. Uh, not quite, but almost. And I almost think it might have been a little bit better uh, as a novella. Um, but this was a pretty straightforward story. There was only uh, one story arc that happened was happening really uh, in this book. Um, it was probably the most straightforward Star Wars um, novel that I've read so far. Um, so what was the novel about? Uh, so the novel is about um, Captain Pelion. Here's where chronologically Pelion makes his first appearance. Uh, Pelion has a, a, a ship called the Leveler, and it basically has to take it on a shakedown cruise. It's been in the shipyards, it's been some modifications that have been made to it, some weapon enhancements that have been made to it, and he gets to take it on a shakedown cruise. Uh, and he takes Ahsoka with him uh, because Anakin wants to have a little time away from his Padawan because he wants to go spend some time with Padme on the down low. So, Pelion takes Ahsoka and Rex on this shakedown cruise. And while they're out there, they get a distress call from a planet in the Foth system called Jan Fathal. I believe I pronounced that right. Jan Fathal. Um, and what it's about is the, uh, the Republic intelligence has a, has a spy on that planet. Uh, the spy's name is Helena Devis, uh, and she's been there inserted because she's trying to help overthrow a regime. Uh, it's part of the Republic's thing. And while she's there, the Separatists attack the planet because they want to take the planet. She gets caught in this uh, invasion from the Separatists. She sends out an, an, an extraction order. She wants to get taken out. Pelion is the only one who's close enough, uh, so he goes. And in addition... To, to being the closest one there, uh, Helena Davis also happens to be Pelion's girlfriend. So he fly, he goes to the planet to, uh, to extract her, to rescue her with Rex and Ahsoka and a bunch of other clone troopers. Um, Anakin, meanwhile, feels bad that he ditched his men to go with Padme. So he leaves Padme and he goes to join Pelion uh, with the extraction, uh, you know, help him with Jen Fathal to get the, the, the agent out. Um, and on their way to this planet, uh, Pelion's on the, on the way to the planet, uh, they come across another ship called the Wookiee Gunner, and the ship is full of Jedi. But they're not full of Jedi that belong to the Jedi Order. They're what you would call apostate Jedi. They've broken away from the Order because they don't believe in the Order's doctrines. They don't believe in uh, what the Order is, is putting forth for rules. So they sort of have broken away. They're like this little secret sect. Um, and they help Pelion and Anakin and Ahsoka uh, rescue Helena Davis from this planet. Um, they are very interesting Jedi, um, because these are Jedi that don't follow the rules. Uh, they believe in attachments. These are Jedi that are married, that, are, that have fallen in love, that have relationships, that have attachments. Uh, they believe that, um, you can be trained at any age. Uh, they, if you're, even if you're older and you want to be, to learn the ways of the force and you want to be a Padawan, your, your age is not a limiter in whether or not you can be trained. Masters can have multiple Padawans at a time. So they're almost the polar opposites of what the Jedi in the Jedi Order are and what Master Yoda and all the other ones are, um. So it's a new viewpoint that we get to see from the Jedi. That's essentially the story. There's, uh, there's a rescue. Uh, there's a sleeper agent that needs help. There's a separatist attack. And um, they do it. They wind up rescuing uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, agent. 
uh, and making it out uh, and back to Coruscant. Um, and the side story that goes along with the book is that Anakin and Ahsoka run into these other Jedi and they get a different opinion. Uh, and, you know, they've been taught that the way that these Jedi are living with attachment and all that, they were taught that that's the path to the dark side. And clearly these Jedi are not dark Jedi. They haven't fallen to the dark side. So they start to wonder and they start to question the Jedi Order's rules. And do we really need these rules? And do the Jedi really need these rules? So it kind of throws a monkey wrench into what Ahsoka and Anakin have been taught. And all the other Jedi uh, in the traditional Orthodox Jedi Order have been taught. Uh, so this uh, is what... Uh, this is the moral quandary that Karen Travers has, has put forth in front of Ahsoka and Anakin to sort of see how they wrestle with these questions and how they deal with viewpoints, Jedi viewpoints, that are different than their own and that are different than what they've been taught. Um, overall, I really enjoyed the book. I believe I gave it a four on Goodreads. I was going to give it a three on Goodreads, but I gave it a four on Goodreads because this book really uh, has a lot of call forwards to future books in the series. And what I mean by that is they're really callbacks because these are people that you've seen before. Uh, but if you're reading it chronologically, um, these are call forwards. Uh, these are the first time you begin to see important people, people that are going to be really important to the EU going forward. Uh, the first one is Pelion. Pelion takes center stage in this. We who have read all the books in prior know who Pelion is, but if you are reading it in this order, this is the first time you meet him. This is Pelion during the Clone Wars and during the Republic, way before he becomes a uh, captain for the Empire, way before he becomes Thrawn's right-hand man, way before he does all of the stuff that he does in the New Republic books. This is the beginning of Pelion's story. It was great to see him there because we know he we have a long road ahead of us for what uh, is coming with Pelion. So that was the first call forward, the first connection that she made. Second connection that she made was with Armand Assad, who was who is the director of Republic Intelligence. He's the one that sent the sleeper agent to Jen Fathal. Armand Assad is going to also be very instrumental going forward because he's going to eventually be part of the Empire uh, Intelligence Network. And so going forward in the New Republic books and some of the X-Wing books, we're going to see more of Assad and, 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 how, uh, and how his story unfolds. So that was the second call forward. And the third one was... Uh, uh, the Jedi, the the uh, the rogue Jedi sect, they uh, run into uh, two of the Jedi that they meet, that Anakin and Ahsoka meet, are Callista and Geth. Uh, Callista is extremely adept at machinery. She has a sort of a rare uh, Jedi ability where she can manipulate machinery. She can actually insert herself into. Uh, things like targeting computers and, and mainline computers and, uh, uh, and hyperdrives. And she can actually run, use the force to run machines, which will become very important later on. But Callista and Geth also will become important in the New Republic books going forward and um, past the, the Vong War. So we're introduced to four people that we're going to see down the road uh, that are going to have some very big story arcs that are going to have some very big important moments that are going to do some important things with uh, the new republic that are going to do some important things with the future jedi order so it was neat to see karen travers take these people and connect them in this way to, to see them when they were in the clone wars when they were in the republic before the empire hit and what they were doing then and then when we eventually get to see them in their respective books, we can start to see their journey and we'll know where they came from. And I thought that was really, really neat for her to do. And I also liked how she put that moral quandary uh, in front of Ahsoka and in front of Anakin and how we begin to see that there are other viewpoints out there 
other than what Yoda and Windu and everybody on Coruscant um, believes, that there are other Jedi that may have splinter groups, that may have broken off, that have their own opinions, that have their own viewpoints on the Force and on what it means to be a Jedi, and we're starting to see that now, that there are other ways of thinking out there. We're going to start to see a lot more of that as the books go on, and when we get past the Empire and into the New Republic books, we're going to start seeing more different opinions and different thought patterns on what the Force and what Jedi are, what they should be, and what the future of the, the Force and the Jedi would be. So it was neat to see uh, that she put that in there, um, especially for, not so much for Ahsoka, but especially for Anakin, because this is what he he wrestles with. And these Jedi, these new Jedi, the, this rogue sect that uh, you, you they run into, their big thing with attachment was it's not it's not attachment that the Jedi warn you and caution you about. What they're really warning and cautioning you about is obsession. It's okay to be attached, but it's, it, when that attachment goes into obsession, that's when you get a problem. And that's what Anakin is wrestling with, this obsession of keeping the people that he loves alive and keeping them safe and, and being able to save them. His attachment is unhealthy because his attachment is obsession. And that's what these Jedi believe, that you can get married, you can have children, you can love who you want to love, um, but it's when you're love becomes an, an obsession that that's when it becomes dangerous because if you can if you're okay with letting the people you love go letting them go letting them leave if that's what they want and you're okay with that then you're in a good position with with attachment but if you can't then you got to start thinking about what that means to you and maybe the attachments that you're forming are not healthy. Uh, and that's the lesson they were trying to teach Anakin in a sort of roundabout way. He was trying to teach him that lesson without really coming out and saying that was the lesson he was trying to teach him. And that really is the problem with Anakin. The problem with Anakin isn't that he had he got married and isn't that he fell in love and isn't that he it's, it's his 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 attachments go so far to the obsession level. He is absolutely obsessed to keep people alive and save them, that he will do anything, literally. And we know what he winds up doing. He will do anything to save people. And that is unhealthy, which is a completely different viewpoint than what Yoda and Windu and everybody else was teaching him. They just say, just don't do it at all, which is also unhealthy. You know, it's unhealthy to just have no uh, attachments and to just be these lonely pillars of peacekeepers wandering through the galaxy. Uh, you have to have something to fight for, someone to fight for, uh, and and that's that's healthy. Um, so that was neat to see that that was was presented in the book, and we'll see more of that down the road as we go along. Um, so, guys, that is my review of Karen Travis's. Clone Wars, No Prisoners, and it is a four-star, uh, give it a four-star read on Goodreads. The next book that we're going to be reading in the series is the third of the fourth trade paperback size book, so that's going to be uh, Star Wars, Clone Wars, Gambit, Stealth, which is the first of a two-part story. Apparently, Stealth and Siege are part one and part two, so uh, we will be starting this, uh, we will be starting this next. So guys, what did you think? Did you, uh, did, have you, have you read the book? Uh, have you watched the, uh, animated series? Do you enjoy it? Did you not like it? Tell me what you thought. Put it down below. Give me your comments. Give you a thumbs up, uh, and a subscribe and a share. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies, tell the people that you know that may be part of these rogue uh, Jedi sects that are wandering through the galaxy. And until next time, I will see you in the next review.